so um, welcome to my pre presentation. And uh, my name is uh, Guglielmo De Gregori, and I work as a game designer in Italy. And uh, my uh, speech uh, will be about how um, ancient philosophy uh, from Rome, uh, from Greek, and from. Uh, hey, Italian. sorry. Sorry, yes? sorry, sorry. Uh, can we start one more time and start with uh, full screen of your presentation? Oh, sure. <laughs> yeah, it will be easier to make it better after that, okay? Yes. Yes, thanks very much. Okay, perfect. Okay, now I think it works. Okay, so. Um, hello, welcome to my presentation. Uh, my name is Guglielmo De Gregori. Um, and uh, I work as a game designer in Italy. Uh, so uh, my uh, speech uh, will be uh, concentrating uh, uh, about how uh, ancient philosophy uh, can improve something as modern and technology based as game design and development. And uh, so uh, the main concept I would like to discuss is uh, the concept of Otium. Uh, Otium is a Latin word, uh, which is meant to express laziness, <laughs> of course. Um, it's a very nuanced word, and um, it's, uh, I mean, uh, it has a lot of complex meanings, and of course, it, 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 some of the meanings get lost in translation. Uh, so, uh, we will be uh, elaborating a lot uh, about this concept, this very ancient concept, and then, uh, we will uh, see how this uh, ancient concept uh, can be applied to a modern craft, which is game design. Uh, so a little bit of myself, uh, as I said before, uh, I'm a game designer. Uh, my mm, passion for game design is actually uh, encompassing all of the aspects of game creation. So I like to write, I like to make art, I make code, um, I'm a Unity user and I love Unreal Engine, of course. So I'm, I very, um, I think that the holistic approach of game design is very much important. And uh, my main project at the moment is working as a lead designer uh, for the uh, historically accurate visual novel, Dark Renaissance, uh, which is, of course, as you can imagine for the name, is uh, based on Renaissance. So uh, I myself, I'm, I'm very, uh, obsessed on the concept of, of history, uh, fine arts, uh, museums, uh, and Italian history. Uh, so uh, it's a no-brainer that I got to work on a uh, games that is pretty much based on Italian history and cultural heritage. And uh, my other passions are psychology, uh, and the, and mainly uh, where psychology uh, collides with uh, cre creative process uh, and uh, of course uh, how uh, the mind is shaped to be a perfect uh, creative machine. Um, I'm also a game jams enthusiast uh, so because I think a game jam give uh, a very uh, important uh, um, framework uh, it's like a magic circle which in a, a small uh, uh, set of hours you need to create a game uh, so it's uh, uh, in, in a nutshell, you can see the, uh, the inner workings of a game design and development team. Uh, so I think that game gems, uh, if applied to the to psychology concepts, to creativity and cognitive processes, can be a very important tool of exploration uh, for yourself and for your team. And of course, I'm pretty much Italian, which is uh, pretty evident from uh, uh, the accent I fear. So, um, my uh, first concept, uh, as I said, is talking about Otium. Uh, what you can see in, the, uh, in this painting, which is by John William Waterhouse, uh, it's called Dolce Far Niente, um, which actually means uh, the sweet doing nothing, okay? Um, so, this, uh, this is in English painting, but this, the title is Italian because um, I think uh, the, the concept of doing nothing uh, is kind of pretty much related to Italians, but, uh, but it, there are deep cultural reasons for that. And uh, so, uh, while Ozio means, uh, means doing nothing, um, negozio means doing something. And of course, 
um, there is much more complexity to this dichotomy. Uh, however, uh, negotium is what uh, for ancient Romans uh, was like uh, uh, the an award expressing business. Okay, uh, when you are busy, you are doing the negotium. You are, uh, uh, of course, and if you think about it, so when you talk about negotiations, uh, you are talking about doing business. But the the, the root of the words uh, in stays in negotium, in doing nothing. So when you are doing business, when when you do when you work, when you are arranging a deal with someone. Uh, when you're creating a game design document, you are creating, a, uh, I mean, a script for, for Unity. Uh, you're doing a negotium. You are, uh, you are not negotiating. You are being active. However, there was, was um, there was much more uh, profundity to this uh, to this concept. I mean, uh, you can just say that Roman said, "Oh, some of us will doing uh, be doing nothing. Some of you uh, will doing uh, be doing a lot of things." It's not like that. Uh, this dichotomy is at the very root of Italian culture and Mediterranean culture, uh, and it's. Uh, uh, it goes a long way uh, when it comes, uh, uh, when it intertwines uh, with uh, uh, social and political political life. Uh, so, uh, of course, uh, as you can imagine, also from ancient paintings and from uh, uh, pop culture, uh, you used to see, uh, see that philosophers, even in ancient Greek, used to take a stroll. Okay, the, the meaning of taking a stroll uh, made, uh, was very deep. I mean, uh, Greek, uh, ancient uh, Greek philosophers uh, took uh, taking a stroll very seriously. Um, so there is uh, uh, philosophy, uh, in, Ita in, in Italian at least, as um, a precise verb uh, for it, which is uh, philosophare, uh, which is doing philosophy. Uh, so, uh, but philosophare, uh, today as even a negative approach because you say uh, you're just a philosopher you are doing nothing okay so it's pretty much ingrained in the, uh, the mind of people the idea that thinking is not useful and uh, uh, we will see later how this can be applied to game design and to game development um, but uh, Seneca as uh, which is this uh, uh, great ancient uh, uh, Latin uh, uh, philosopher and uh, writer and poet uh, and um, activist in a certain way uh, took uh, Otium very, very uh, seriously uh, because um, there were, uh, in the in an ancient world, uh, ancient Mediterranean world, the concept of slaking half uh, had many different nuances. Uh, for some philosopher, uh, doing nothing was moral because you said uh, you, uh, in a world where uh, social life, artistic life, and intellectual life are intertwined, the fact that you are doing nothing is, uh, um, is, is, is detriment for you because you, you are being moral, you're not contributing to the life of the Agora. To the life of the uh, the uh, 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 the the best people. So you are you are not being the one of the best if you are doing nothing. Um, so there was this ongoing discussion about uh, uh, the aristocracy, uh, which is um, in uh, of, of ancient Greek and of uh, uh, and, and of uh, ancient Roman uh, uh, social life. Um, this discussion uh, was uh, at many different point of view, and uh, the point of view of Seneca uh, was uh, that uh, productive laziness, uh, that oxium, uh, was indeed uh, a way of being productive. Um, many other people didn't think like him. Uh, we can think of Cicero, uh, which is the famous uh, uh, the prince of the forum, the most like uh, a modern lawyer, uh, we said that otium and negotium couldn't be separated, so you couldn't be a good person, you couldn't be a, a good citizen of the urbe if you, were, uh, if you weren't, weren't able to uh, find a mediation between uh, being uh, slacking off and working. 
uh, many other people uh, so on the other uh, on the, were on the other spectrum of this uh, idea uh, of course but it's the epicurean approach uh, the famous philosopher that said that the the reason for uh, for, um, I mean, uh, the um, being yourself means doing nothing. Uh, you uh, you need to indulge in pleasure. I mean, uh, it, it was the same philosopher who said uh, who talk a lot about death and the end of human life. So uh, his conclusion was that uh, the uh, only thing that matters is the research of pleasure. And this is a pretty much uh, concept uh, uh, that can, um, keeps on getting repeated until today, and that was used even by uh, more uh, recent uh, modern poets uh, in, in Italy, like D'Annunzio. I mean, he wrote an entire book about pleasure. Okay, uh, we can think of um, uh, also the, um, I mean, decadent. decadent dentist poets. So, uh, of course, the idea that uh, being improductive uh, can be immoral is pretty much ingrained in, uh, in, the, in, um, in the minds of ancient philosophers. But at the same time, uh, there was an ongoing discussion, and this discussion can be related to game design as well. Uh, so, uh, the answer to, to answer to this ancient dichotomy for Seneca, was that uh, uh, when you are slacking off, uh, actually you are not slacking off. Is this was the answer to Seneca uh, to a century-long uh, discussion? Uh, Seneca from this uh, he said that nature has assigned us a place and has placed us in its center, giving us the ability to see what surrounds us. Above their upright position, is it has placed the head up and a joint neck, so that the king can be observed more easily. Uh, in actually, Seneca is saying that we are evolved monkeys and we can observe the world. So, observing the world, uh, even without taking action, is a work per se. Uh, when uh, Seneca said, uh, he said thing, uh, that hope. Uh, breaks down the barriers of the sky. It is not satisfied with knowing what is shown to the eye. So here Seneca is saying that we are just not monkeys with eyes and a body and a neck and a head. We have top inside uh, of us. And uh, uh, thinking is labor. Thinking is difficult. Thinking is concrete. Uh, so, uh, um, and this is very important for every kind of uh, human breakthrough. I mean, uh, this, uh, the fact that we can transcend our own body and talk and think in a way uh, where our, uh, our own body is not involved is what has brought to uh, breakthrough in physics, physics, for example. And uh, I mean, uh, the way Einstein uh, discovered relativity was pretty much based on the idea that uh, he, he crossed the boundary uh, between um, what we experience in every uh, in everyday life and what can what we could experience uh, in the life outside our world. It was very counterintuitive. So uh, thought is uh, thinking is the only thing that breaks the boundaries between our monkey identity and brings us uh, to explore the abstract and of course the universe and uh, I, I need to add that Seneca was a little biased by this in saying this uh, because and uh, he was um, uh, he had a project for Nero Emperor in, in the head of Seneca uh, Nero uh, had to become uh, uh, the philosopher emperor, uh, but Nero became the same guy who uh, lay waste to Rome and burned everything. Uh, so <laughs> the the plan made by Seneca was went pretty wrong. Uh, so you can see how Seneca was kind of disillusioned, uh, disillusioned with his vision, and he just said that. Uh, 
uh, sometimes probably in the just say it's true that and I prefer uh, not being an activist I prefer leaving all of that to other people and I just prefer being myself being an artist being a writer and uh, the only way to be myself is the retire from a, a political life and uh, become an artist become a writer uh, become an active uh, a writer which is not involved in practical life and I think that this will lead to what ultimately is known as arts for art's sakes, like Oscar Wilde said. Um, but for Seneca was kind of different because it's not arts for art's sakes. It's um, arts uh, for the sake of discovering the universe, uh, which uh, discovering the universe is not uh, being involved in political trifles, but uh, uh, observing yourself. Uh, what Seneca was talking about uh, when he was talking about Otium uh, was talking about uh, uh, the difficulty of being yourself. How being yourself, I being a creator, being a game designer is a job in itself. Uh, and that leads, leads us to another uh, master of our age and our uh, cultural history. Uh, of course, I just mentioned working on a, a video game based on rena um, his, uh, historical periods and in particular Renaissance. And uh, while I can't spoil uh, much on this plot, uh, um, it's pretty evident that Leonardo is going to be involved. And uh, Leonardo, um, so while I was researching uh, for writing and design a game where Leonardo is involved, uh, I could, uh, but uh, go back to uh, my books and my uh, my notes, uh, my, my the videos uh, I have accumulated over the years uh, while uh, uh, being a, a real fanboy of Leonardo. Okay, uh, so uh, yes, I'm real uh, Leonardo da Vinci uh, fanboy uh, because, in of course, everyone in the world knows Leonardo da Vinci. Uh, but what is uh, what uh, what is really fascinating? Uh, um, sorry, I, I think the camera is going uh, off focus. Mm, just a moment. Mm. Sorry. Okay, uh, sorry for the interruption. So I was saying uh, that um, Leonardo da Vinci can be uh, called an hyperactive liker. Um, of course, uh, he's one of the greatest genius in the history of mankind. Uh, so I, there is no mean to be unrespectful to him because of course, uh, I mean, uh, the core of the European uh, uh, Western um, thinking is based on, on Leonardo's works. Okay, uh, so uh, when I talk uh, of Leonardo as an hyperactive slaker, I'm actually taking inspiration from um, an Italian uh, uh, art critic, which is called uh, uh, Vittorio Sgarbi, uh, which is a uh, great person, personality, and uh, is very famous in Italy for his tantrums on TVs. Uh, Italian TV, but he's a great uh, art historian. And when he talks about Leonardo da Vinci, 
is not very kind to him. I mean, um, so I'm pretty much obsessed with Leonardo da Vinci, and uh, I know a lot about his works, but what fascinates me uh, the most is his mind. Okay, and when uh, Vittorius Garbit uh, talks about uh, Leonardo's minds, uh, it's not very, it's very rude. I mean, uh, because he is actually saying that, um, I mean, I will use kinder words, of course, but uh, I, I won't swear. <laughs> but um, when um, Vittorius Garbi said that Leonardo actually didn't, didn't do anything, he was a slacker, he was very lazy, and he was uh, a terrible artist uh, in his words. I mean, that, was, that is an hyperbole, of course, because um, I think that uh, he, every one of us has eyes, he can see uh, a Leonardo drawing and say this is beautiful. I mean, if you see Leonardo's notice, uh, you can go to a museum here in Italy or in your uh, other part of the world, uh, you can see that uh, how it was beautiful, uh, uh, how his hand-drawn uh, notes were beautiful. and. The, but uh, uh, without being hyperbolic as uh, Vittorius Garbi is, and I need to uh, address the fact that after all, uh, Leonardo uh, was very less productive than other artists of his time. Uh, you can see how uh, Michelangelo was, uh, uh, even in the pop culture tellings of his history, um, Michelangelo was obsessed with perfectionism, okay? Uh, so Michelangelo left uh, a great heritage to us. Uh, it was uh, probably sl uh, slow, uh, but is it is, it is uh, the incarnation of painstaking. Uh, I mean, some, someone like uh, Michelangelo was obsessed with perfection. And of course, uh, uh, this led to great masterpiece, great, uh, physical masterpiece that you cannot serve today as well. And uh, uh, of course, uh, and, but uh, he left even uh, unfinished works because uh, sometimes uh, he died, <laughs> uh, simply he died. So uh, there is a famous tomb uh, made for uh, uh, the Vatican, which is unfinished. But we can say that Michelangelo was, uh, was pretty, pretty much fixated on finish something. Uh, so he struggled because creativity, and even if you talk about gain development, you can talk about a struggle. Uh, the struggle of Michelangelo was uh, being perfect, being perfect in every sense. The struggle with Leonardo, uh, what in, in his mind, at least according to many critics, was that it uh, was really rambling uh, f from uh, uh, one inspiration to another, he had, he, he had left a lot of an unfinished business, uh, unfinished works. Uh, the most famous that you can see uh, is uh, here on the screen uh, is the famous Battle of Angiari. Uh, what you can see on the screen uh, is just a reproduction because the Battle of Angiari, which is a pretty cool drawing, uh, it does not exist. You, uh, there is, um, there maybe there are some uh, draft sketches around, uh, but they're, uh, when they're not uh, validated. Uh, it's, it's not. It's unclear if it belonged to Leonardo or someone else. And the one you see here is made by someone else, based on what. Uh, uh, probably was Leonardo's idea, but it's, it's one of those examples where a work of art gets lost in history. And uh, this uh, particular work of art, uh, it was, um, was really interesting because uh, when Leonardo uh, tackled on the process of frescoing uh, the, the Battle of Anghiari on, on a wall, uh, he experimented a new approach. Uh, so, uh, making a fresco, of course, is, uh, is incredibly difficult. I mean, uh, we as game designers, uh, we can use, uh, we have our, our own tools of the trade. We have Unity, we have uh, uh, Graphic Tablet, we have Photoshop, uh, we have uh, Maya, Subset Painter, okay? So, our processes are pretty much uh, an ingrained pipeline. 
uh, when you go to a fresco, in making a fresco, they had their pipeline, like uh, uh, like us game designers. They had uh, uh, best practices. They had uh, uh, it was um, a standardized process. If you go uh, and see Giotto's works in uh, in Assisi in, uh, in Umbria, uh, Giotto's works. Um, thanks also to the work of restorers and historians, uh, are still very uh, clear, clearly visible, where they are uh, vibrant with colors, where beautiful, okay? Uh, but when you see a, a, a fresco made by Leonardo, uh, you can see that he's fading away. Uh, recently, there was a big investment in Italy uh, to bring us to uh, our modern uh, people, uh, the famous uh, Last Supper from uh, uh, Leonardo, which is depicting Jesus and the apostles uh, around him. And uh, you can see in the books how the, the, this is called the Cenacolo, the Last Supper. Uh, you can see that uh, it's very bright, it's very beautiful. But when you go uh, to see the Last Supper, at least before the restoration, it was very pretty. It was like fighting away uh, because Leonardo used techniques that were innovative. So uh, he found a solution that was good for him. He found pleasure in finding a solution. But after many centuries, we need to admit that that solution uh, was not better than uh, the other solution, at least on the long term. Because maybe well, if you were a Renaissance man, and it would be so awesome to be one of them, uh, you could see the Last Supper in original form and see how it was superior to other uh, frescoes of that era. Uh, after uh, so many centuries, <laughs> it's fading away. So. Uh, of course, who, is right, who was right, Leonardo or the other people from his, his, uh, from his era? Uh, so, uh, when you see the Battle of Anghiari, or, or, or better, when you don't see the Battle of Anghiari, uh, you, you understand how Leonardo failed. Of course, he, he failed this, uh, his, this painting, uh, this fresco. Uh, because he created uh, um, a new an entirely new approach for the, uh, depicting the Battle of Anghiari uh, on the wall as a fresco, but that new process was so innovative and even so experimental um, that uh, the Battle of Anghiari just faded away uh, almost immediately. Uh, so there is uh, this nice documentary in, which was shown in Italy uh, where you can see how this was like uh, uh, a omen for Leonardo because he just painted this beautiful painting and then uh, like the, the rain brought uh, uh, his uh, vision away. So it was, uh, uh, was really unfortunate for him. I think that uh, as an artist, is. Uh, 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 that can be a uh, very ex uh, a very ex ex excruciating pain to see your work well they come, but something that comes from your heart that gets destroyed but you can see how Leonardo probably cared much more about the process itself than the drawing itself uh, so um, um, I think that uh, you can start to relate uh, with Leonardo because uh, when you're making a game, uh, which is, uh, a game is pretty much uh, uh, like as a Renaissance approach, because uh, as Renaissance uh, artists, uh, a game designer needs to be able to to uh, know ma uh, mathematics, uh, to be able to know physics, uh, to be able to know art, to be able to know um, how to write. I mean, it's an all-encompassing craft. Uh, so uh, when everything goes smooth and your uh, Unity project works and you don't get compiler errors, you are happy. Uh, you probably, uh, if you work in a standardized industry, you uh, uh, the process is pretty much, pretty much smooth, so you won't encounter uh, great risks. But when you experiment by yourself, I send, uh, I'm uh, 100% sure that you encounter some very uh, moments similar to the Battle of Anghiari. I mean, you made up uh, uh, a great plan, you studied a lot, you made uh, an impressive flowchart, you uh, researched a lot on code, you are uh, trying new solution, you, are, you want to be innovative, and then it doesn't work. So you had uh, the greatest, greatest idea, the greatest 
uh, innovative idea uh, from a standpoint of code and uh, uh, design, and then it just fails uh, or, or, or it doesn't sell anything. So uh, failing, of course, is being uh, an integral part of uh, um, artistic creation. Uh, I hope you're starting to see uh, where Leonardo da Vinci's life, where Seneca's teachings, uh, sorry, just went out of focus. Uh, okay. I hope you are starting to see uh, where uh, creative process uh, and uh, your creative process as again designers uh, can collide so much with the ancient wisdom of Leonardo da Vinci of Seneca and other critical people and so uh, this is interesting because when I submit the, the lecture uh, to the students uh, of course, um, I didn't even know what uh, a coronavirus was. So, uh, fortunately or unfortunately, uh, I can now also give some insights about uh, creative process and the lockdown. I mean, the lockdown has made me uh, think a lot about uh, time management, time boxing, and um, my conclusion are that, uh, uh, as many other people are telling these days, is the lockdown and smart working make even more difficult to determine an, uh, a difference between work and free time. Uh, these are my takeaways. You will always coexist with yourself and your creativity. And uh, where you are not in an office, when you are stuck in your house, uh, you will always coexist with yourself. You will always think about yourself and you also uh, start to think, I have a lot more time, I don't need to commute. So let's concentrate on what I do uh, like most, which is game creation. Uh, creating may imply struggle and obsession. So it's okay being struggling or uh, obsessive. Um, productive time has to coexist with contemplative time. And uh, uh, sometimes, at the same time, uh, doing absolutely nothing is good, though. Um, also, uh, you will be ridden with feeling of guilt, like uh, this is always a capitalist, almost religious burden, the feeling of guilt when you're not doing anything. So uh, talking with a lot of people on Discord, other fellow developers, uh, we elaborated a lot on these uh, thoughts because um, you very like just like this conundrum where you say um, uh, I feel guilty for doing nothing but I feel awful uh, when I do something. So uh, the answer to this, according to me, was that uh, there is no division. I mean, you are always yourself. And uh, he, um, but uh, paradoxically uh, speaking, some uh, guy who was talking with on Discord said that he felt guilty uh, for making uh, a break but he also felt guilty uh, for working too much and I experienced that myself too. Uh, so there is conundrum, it's very difficult to, uh, uh, to interpret, but I use the wisdom of ancient to solve this conundrum. And of course, my idea is that self-regulation is always the key. Uh, the only approach that works is the one that works for you. And these are my takeaways. And while I was stuck in lockdown and I had a lot of time to think about stuff, I stumbled upon uh, this recurring, um, uh, recurring um, tweet by John Carmack. Uh, John Carmack said uh, in 2000, 2016, and uh, he, he opened up a thread about, uh, uh, about working hours. And I think that his take on working hours is brilliant and is completely based on what I believe most, self-regulation. Uh, this idea by John Carmack uh, resurfaced because uh, he was attacked for saying these things. Uh, 
Uh, but when it went, uh, when the situation of uh, coronavirus went uh, uh, so exploded in such a way, uh, John Carmack made a tweet and said, uh, okay, so if you think that working too much affects your productivity and you are adamant about this concept, so why don't you apply this concept even in the uh, context of a pandemic where, of course, uh, the uh, medics uh, and paramedics are working all the time. And it was a good point because how can you be adamant about the idea that working less uh, makes uh, you more productive when in the, the practical life or every day tells you the other, uh, the opposite other. Uh, so uh, this is a very long text, uh, but I think that the, uh, is, I will sum it up. Uh, what John Carmack is, is saying is that, um, of course, that the obsession is fulfilling. Okay, and my idea is that if you are a game designer, and a game designer is an artist, everyone involved in game creation is an artist, uh, so uh, you will uh, tend to be obsessed. Uh, so because art is obsession, art is struggling. And so what John Carmack say is uh, um, that it's okay to uh, work all the time. It is okay to be obsessed. Of course, obsession must be regulated, must be uh, modulated. Uh, John Carmack says, uh, you, can, you may hit on a wall on a one task and you could say, that's it, I'm John for the day and head home. Uh, or, you could switch over to something else that has a different writing and get more accomplished. Even when you're clearly not at your peak, where is always plenty to do that doesn't require your best. And it would actually be a waste to spend your best time on it. You can also go to the gym for your work by studying, exploring, and experimenting, spending more hours in, in service to the goal. And as a game designer, I suggest a lot of taking this approach. When John Carmack is saying, uh, let's go to the gym, it's not saying it literally, he's saying go to the gym for your work, which is my, in a case of a game designer, uh, is, um, is, uh, um, is very, very common. Uh, I make the most simple of the example. Uh, so uh, being stuck in a lockdown, uh, my, uh, I didn't have too much occasion for leisure. I mean, uh, I could go to the garden, and, but uh, I couldn't go out to my, uh, outside my garden. And so it was very limited in, in these days. So uh, the only thing uh, I had at home were my video games, uh, Nintendo Switch and PS4. And so, uh, and so my mind went and said, okay, the only uh, fun thing you can do now is, play, is playing. Uh, so even while I was playing, I was kind of working because, uh, uh, for example, I was really uh, got uh, um, passionate uh, with uh, finishing uh, Zelda Breath of the Wild. And in that moment, I discovered that I couldn't switch off being a game designer because everything I saw while playing Zelda Breath of the Wild was telling me, uh, this is perfect uh, for your next project, uh, take inspiration for this. And, oh, you see that's how the sound when you cook uh, the, uh, the meat is cool. You should include that in your game. Or oh, you see how beautiful the graphic is. Why don't you do uh, something like that? Uh, find, uh, why don't you program a similar shader also in Unity when you get back to work? And you are kind of obsessed. I recognize this. But uh, it's, I think it is completely said, uh, okay to be obsessed. And I would say to my friend on Discord that maybe this can solve this conundrum. Uh, yes? Uh, so, uh, ju it just stopped for a, for a second, though. Is okay? Okay. Mm. Uh, go back. So, uh, 
I would um, what I would say to my friend on Discord saying when he was feeling guilty uh, for being obsessed is that you have not a choice because you, if you love your uh, your work, you will get plenty of occasion to work uh, even while you, while you don't think you are working. So um, um, I I purchased Kingdom Hearts three on the on the store during lockdown and. Uh, I spent all the time say, "Oh my God, this is beautiful! Oh my God, this is uh, this is great! Oh, I would love to do that for my game as well." So uh, I kind of felt guilty for not being able to break from uh, my obsession, but at the same time, it is not a choice. And this brings back to uh, Seneca, uh, which is not doing, uh, uh, which is not being unproductive. It's just being lazy, but it's productive laziness. So uh, that is. Uh, I'm at a point where everything, almost everything I do makes me think of games. And I stopped the feeling uh, guilty about that. And uh, so, uh, mm, of course, I want to restate that self-regulation is the key. But, and this was, this was the point of uh, John Carmack too. Uh, because uh, he says that given two equally talented people, the one that pursues a goal obsessively for well over 40 hours a week is going to chip more. Uh, they might be less, less happy and healthy, but I'm not even sure about that. Obsession can be rather fulfilling, although, although probably not across an entire lifetime. And that is pretty obvious. obvious. And um, so John Carmack uh, uh, had this kind of, uh, in this thread went a lot of answers, a lot of replies, and went a lot uh, 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 farther from his uh, initial uh, idea, uh, but this uh, this his thinking is was um, uh, it was very inspiring to me. Uh, what you uh, what you said uh, witnessed before was um, a quote by Immanuel Kant and his famous words: uh, "Without my regular works at eight in the evening." Neither the critic of pure reason nor the critic of practical reason would have seen the light. This is another great philosopher, another great um, thinker of our uh, history that is saying that is not stuck in front of the desk all the time, but even when he goes out for a work, is working. So uh, it's very, uh, when you do a creative job, it's very difficult to detach your creative persona from yourself. Uh, of course, even John Carmack says that uh, uh, obsession uh, uh, can be fulfilling, but not across an entire lifetime. And I suggest not an entire uh, day, because I mean, we are uh, human after all, and uh, being very robotic is not, uh, I mean, is not going to work for anyone, uh, uh, but uh, as I said before, self-regulation is key. And probably what lockdown uh, and smart working has led to us uh, to think uh, correctly is, is, is that uh, uh, more productivity implies more self-regulation. Uh, we need to remember, of course, uh, uh, that the gaming industry is uh, a creative industry with artistic ambition, just like Hideo Kojima said uh, the, uh, one year ago when that trending came out. So it is based on underlying creative processes managed by human minds. And we, but we are commissioners, just like Leonardo. Leonardo was not uh, uh, free, uh, free to do his art like any. Uh, 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 I mean, like a kid in the kindergarten. He, the magnificent Lorenzo Magnifico from the uh, fa Medici's family uh, gave him, him a lot of money to do his work. He was a patron of the arts. Uh, but of course, you don't want to let down Lorenzo Magnifico, who was the most powerful tyrant in, the, in, in Florence. So uh, you see that uh, uh, as game designer, freelancer, game designer, working in a studio, whatever you wish, uh, you see that uh, work-life balance uh, uh, is a problem with uh, accumulate us to people like Leonardo. And uh, today is uh, the discussion is pretty much ongoing because uh, 
uh, when it comes to gains, we still see a lot of abuse or long, sh uh, long shift, uh, burning out, unpaid hours of works, and that's the dark side of our obsession, because uh, being assessed is okay, but uh, being exploited is another thing. And uh, that's why many companies are offering the option to do um, less long uh, uh, working shifts. Uh, for example, we had the example of Microsoft Japan, where they had four uh, days a week of work uh, instead of uh, uh, the classic five. And that, uh, according to some uh, research, uh, improved productivity. Uh, but on the on the other side, uh, John Carmack said that uh, that's okay. That may work for some individuals, but if we force people to work less, someone uh, may be less productive because obsessive people like Leonardo was, like Carmack probably is, uh, need uh, need to work a lot. Need uh, to. Uh, can't be just, they can't just be said uh, uh, get uh, get told uh, stop working because they're not they're unable to stop working and that is good uh, for some for someone for me it is good for example because I don't suffer and because uh, uh, I don't suffer because I see gains uh, game design game development programming art as a personal struggle a personal challenge so video games are art and art is made by people. And art is a personal struggle. Sometimes it's suffering, sometimes it's joy. It's, it's joy. However, uh, this is based on freedom. I mean, uh, if very uh, cor corporate uh, mentality um, may uh, um, obfuscate your freedom. Uh, so it's very difficult for, uh, for me uh, to think that uh, think like, like uh, uh, creativity can be regulated uh, in a very strict way, uh, be it in a sense that you get less working hour, be in a sense that you get more working hour. Um, and of course, uh, it is very important for something like uh, um, uh, video games, because video games are meant to make people happy, they are meant to make people uh, smile. So uh, would you play a game which is made by people uh, we are suffering, we are made, uh, uh, we are doing the night uh, in their office. I don't think so. And I think that Animal Crossing was delayed and, and that was such a hit and became a benchmark for awesome games, making people make, uh, cope with the lockdown. So it's a perfect example of, uh, of how um, a game uh, can, uh, that, is, that it was made uh, to uh, to uh, during uh, a delayed game, uh, a game which was delayed uh, to make the employees uh, more relaxed, uh, more chilling, uh, eventually became such a need, such a need that in, in tech, in, uh, that had an, uh, a positive impact on the life of people. And uh, you may not notice the suffering in a game, but of course it is not an ethical behavior uh, if, uh, if uh, workers get exploited. So I wouldn't be happy while playing uh, uh, a, a game knowing where someone was exploited while working on it. Uh, so uh, I'm going uh, I'm try to wrap up things and get to the conclusion. Uh, so um, you, uh, we need to think uh, as human minds, uh, as a game engine, the most valuable of the game engine, uh, because there is no magic inside. I mean, our mind is a machine uh, that is able to produce data and adopt behaviors which may have impact on our apparently physical world or in a video game, which is not physical. Um, of course, creating in, creating implies using your mind just so you would use your favorite game engine. Uh, you need to be aware of what this computer needs. Remember that there are no boundaries between you and your works. Uh, you are always you. So you need to respect yourself because uh, would you throw your computer out of the window and expect it to work? No, you need to take care of yourself just like you will take care of your computer. Uh, so while I'm saying that obsessing is okay, 
I'm also saying that an obsessed machine like an artist can do has to take care of himself or itself. Uh, so it is crucial to remember that uh, yeah, we are uh, we we are uh, made uh, for creating games. We love creating games. We are obsessed by creating games, but we are uh, we need to take care, stay hydrated, and of course, and uh, uh, so uh, otium can also be simple otium being laziness. So also being lazy, completely lazy. Uh, is okay so going to conclusion um i mm, i emphasize a lot on self-regulation because uh, even for companies even for small companies even for bigger companies uh, you need to remember that game uh, developers are not answers in a will um you um, you're, you don't need to give leisure to yourself because you will fare better. There is not an equation for that. It's not impersonal. Uh, you are not a Ghanai pig, uh, a pig on antibiotics in a cage. You have, uh, uh, but you are always entitled to being momentarily unproductive because as an artist, you rely on a cognitive process that is fueled by Otium. Uh, so, uh, your apparent non-productivity is part of the process. There is no turning off button for creative minds. You are always a, creating, a, a, a creator at each hour of the day. So, uh, it is very important uh, um, to uh, not giving yourself the stick and a carrot or for a corporate to give uh, to the employer the stick and a carrot. Uh, it is a very dangerous approach because it's like uh, for creativity, for, for creativity at least. Uh, because an assembly worker uh, can be, uh, of course, um, happy with stick and carrot, okay. But when you are creative, uh, you uh, you sometimes in, in your heart uh, think that you are doing useless stuff. So it's not uh, simple enough to say that uh, you have a carrot in front of you uh, so better at giving the carrots better at giving uh, making uh, putting uh, uh, leisure activities uh, forced leisure activities in our office i think that the best thing uh, thing to do is creating a safe ecosystem uh, where you are able to live your artistic self all the time truly achieving the quest for being yourself so uh, that's my take on the, on the um, concept uh, of slacking off. And uh, I hope that uh, uh, you uh, get a taste of what uh, Italian thinking is. Uh, because, and, uh, uh, I mean, Italian uh, game developers are on the rise uh, since a few years. And uh, we have a, yeah, but we have a long history of game making in Italy uh, of, of at least 30 years. Uh, so I think that it is very important to give to the to the outside world our approach, which is pretty much different for the uh, most common approach, which is the American approach, uh, the Japanese approach. Uh, I think that what can we, we as Italians uh, can bring to the table when it comes to game development is our own uh, mentality, our culture, uh, our heritage, and our heritage is pretty much based on laziness. So uh, thank you for talking. Uh, thank you, <laughs> thank you for listening to the talk. And uh, I hope uh, this uh, uh, will give you an insight on what uh, being a game designer in Italy means, and uh, that can be also be included in your routine while working on games in every part of the world.